Today, I'm going to share with you one of our extreme camping experiences here in New South Wales, Australia. Well, it's not really extreme for my hubby Jack because he's been to a lot of real authentic or, if I may say, hardcore campsites when he was still a student here in Australia. You know, those campsites where they don't really have toilets and you have to dig the ground or soil so you can. And the ones that don't really have electricity and clean water at all. I can't imagine myself being on those campsites, like, how are we going to cook? How are we going to shower? And most especially, we can't handle having no proper toilets, especially with kids. Fortunately, the one that we went on was a lot better. We had a shared bathroom, shared laundry area, they had a huge playground and a river where my kids can do a variety of recreational water activities. But let me tell you why it was still different from the camping experiences that we've had in the past. You see, for me and my kids, we had our very first camping experience at my family's place in our province in Pangasinan, Philippines. Inside a tent, we had a kitchen, a bathroom, proper beds, and even a day bed. It was such a relaxing camping experience. That's why they call it glamping, because it's a glamorous camping. If you're a social, but glamping can along, diba? The other camping experience that we had was at the Cockatoo Island in Sydney. Though we didn't have our own kitchen, we certainly did have our own dining table and comfortable sleeping mattresses. There's a common bathroom and barbecue area and man, when you wake up in the morning, you have an overlooking view of the harbor bridge. And you can even have your breakfast or relax outside your tent to get a good view of the harbor. Okay, enough of that because that's not exactly what this video is about. This video is about our camping experience at Batanga in New South Wales. What were the good things that we had experienced from this trip and what were the not so good things that we had experienced? Make sure that you stay till the end of this video because you'll never know whether this trip is worth going to or not until you watch the entire video. So let's get on with it! Batonga is about one and a half hours away from the central business district of Sydney. We chose to camp here because travel time is not too long if you drive by car. My kids really get cranky and often complain about long distance traveling, so Hubby and I figured out that Patanga could be ideal to go to if we go out on a holiday trip. So we were driving and true enough, I only got very minimal complaints from the three kiddos. Now that we got here, we observed and observed and checked out what's there to see in this so-called amazing campsite. Now, we had to set up our tent in this particular spot. As you can see, we had two tents to set up, one for my in-laws and another one for my family. It took us approximately an hour before we finished setting up our tent. My brother-in-law and my two boys helped my husband out in setting up the tent, which was great because my kids were being productive and hey! They were definitely helping each other out as a team. They followed their dad's instructions and without their help, dad might have finished setting up our tent in three hours. After we've set up everything, we went to the river and did some recreational water activities. jumped in our floaters. My two boys and their uncle also went fishing. Hmm, it was so shallow so I wasn't really sure if they could get any fish out there. But hey, for as long as it teaches them to be patient, 
why not try it? Then they waited and waited and waited until it was time for them to go and they weren't able to catch anything at all. Good thing is that they were optimistic. They said that they want to go back fishing again the next day. The next day, we explored the river again. This time, we checked out the other side of the river using our kayak. Oh boy, there are a few beautiful houses on the other side. I just couldn't stop staring at them all day. Matthew went on to pick up some shells and pebbles to add up to his shell and pebble collections. My boys also said they caught a crab. Hmm, I'm not too sure about that. David was very busy snorkeling. Um, in the shallow part of the water, I'm not too sure if there's anything exciting to see in six inch deep water. But because he has always been an appreciative kind of boy, he said that it was amazing what he had seen under the water. Hmm, okay. And of course, I was taking lots of photos and videos to capture the special moment of spending time with my family. Now it was time to prepare our first meal. We cooked outdoors, which we truly enjoyed doing, and ate. And when we were done, it was time for us to wash the pans and everything that we used for cooking. We had a very tiny faucet in our campground where we can wash our pans and to be honest, it wasn't ideal. For a person who's germaphobic, I don't really want to wash our kitchen utensils where there's no proper bench. I don't know, it's just me. But as I went to explore this campsite further, there you go. There's a proper sink where we can wash dishes. It wasn't too close from our tent, so never mind. I can't handle bringing all our dirty kitchen stuff from our tent to the common sink area. Now let's get on with our sleeping experience. It was summer when we camped at Batanga and it was so hot. So we woke up sweating. It was like we were all roasted by the time we got out of our tents. So here's a lesson to learn. Go camping when it's autumn or spring. Or if it's in summer, it's best to check the weather forecast and temperature ahead of time so you'll be more prepared to bring the essentials like the electric fan, lots of sun cream, mosquito repellent, and a sleeping net. Kasi nga ang daming lamok! Now, here's the real problem. It was super hot, but it was so windy as well. So my in-laws spent almost half the day keeping our canopy stable by sitting on the corners to stop the canopy from blowing away. But when I asked how their camping experience was, they said they really had fun. So I guess it wasn't too bad at all. There was another problem though. There was only one common bathroom, so if the staff had to close the common bathroom because they had to clean it up, we don't really have a choice. We had to wait until they're done cleaning it up, and because it was so windy at that time, I just wanted my kids to shower wherever they can shower and get dressed straight away so they won't get sick. Lastly, since we only had one common bathroom, when nature calls in the middle of the night, we had to walk all the way to the bathroom with our flashlights on. Our bathrooms were not too close from our campground. To be honest, it was quite spooky, but good thing we got on with it perfectly fine. Overall, the place is great because the campsite is big and it's not too crowded in there. You can play soccer or badminton on the fields and enjoy some water activities like boating, fishing and snorkeling in the deeper parts of the river or do any water sports that you can think of. Camping in Patanga only becomes a hassle if you have never done real camping before. But once you go on a camping trip more frequently, you'll get the hang of it for sure. My kids enjoyed the trip and they even said that they wanted to stay longer. If you go on a camping trip here in Patanga, I suggest you stay for a minimum of three days and two nights because setting up the tent and everything else is not easy and second, there's so many things that you can do in this not too bad campsite. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up 
hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you enjoyed watching this video. Adios!